appreciate, and I've, and I've said this before, but I really, really want to say I appreciate a tremendous church for your faithfulness. And some people are hit and miss, and sometimes you don't know whether they're going to show up or not going to show up. But you folks are faithful. Amen. And that, in this day and time, that is highly commendable. Amen. Amen. That is the truth. Praise God. Amen. The Lord impressed me this morning. My wife knows nothing of this. And uh, this morning, as I was meditating and feeling after the Lord for the and the services today. Amen. The Lord has blessed me in the half of my family, in the half of my wife who suffers tremendously in cancer disease. And she gets very little rest. She's a nebulizer. I don't have any of that. And so she doesn't get any real good sleep. But throughout the week, she works. Average of four times once a day. And so her sleep and rest is not good. Amen. The Lord requested me to have the handkerchief anointed. Praise God. We prayed over it. We prayed over it with the land. And I want to give this church an opportunity after a while, not that long. Amen. But after a while, we <coughs> to Amen. To amen, pray over this. Praise God. Let's believe God for a miracle. Yes. Yes. Amen. My wife. Amen. Yes. Praise God. She suffers and she not she doesn't make a lot of noise. Unless she's around the house. <laughs> but as far as church and complaining and talking about it and advertising, she does not do those things. God is still in the miracle working business. Yes. Yeah. And we are still in the business of believing God for miracles. Yeah. 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 At the same time, we're going to believe God for, and we continue to pray for the rest. Amen. That foot completely. Yeah. You know, it wasn't very many weeks ago that I had a situation where the rest of my life put around my, my toes. And some of you don't know this, but my nickname around some folks is Ricky Nine Toes. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. I don't have nine toes. Uh, they gave one of them away. Or actually, they took one. And uh, the time I had that toe amputated, I, I wish, hindsight's 2020, I wish I'd have got that toe put on a chain. <laughs> put it around my neck. And when my kids got out of line, I'd take that chain. Here, man, I told you so. <laughs> That'd be something you have to do. <laughs> but I had a situation not very many weeks ago that it looked uh, pretty serious. Could have gotten out of hand real quick. And so prayer and yeah. all that. Amen. And God has healed that foot. And I'll see Dr. Brown tomorrow, and he's going to tell me I don't need to see you for another year. Jesus. Amen. Thank the Lord for healing. Yeah. You know, foot wounds on a diabetic is very concerning. Uh -huh. Very, extremely concerning. And so we're just believing God, not just to heal his foot, but to rebuke all diabetes. Amen. Yes. Amen. For his body and my body and anybody else that has diabetes, yes. he commands us to live it. Praise God, we can bring in pancreas in Jesus' name. Now, praise God. I, I feel led to read this morning, the Lord impressed me to read a minute, uh, at least one poem that dropped maybe several years ago. And it's called The Cocoon. And I believe this is going to minister to somebody. And if you'll listen to what God is trying to tell you, Amen. The definition of cocoon is this. 
It is to wrap somebody or something safely. To cover or envelop somebody or something in order to provide warmth or protection. Cocooned in a pile of bed clothes. It means also to keep somebody safe from something, to protect somebody from unpleasantness or danger. With that definite definition in mind, it meant here is the thing called the cocoon. It causes pain and strife and the hardships of life. I found myself wrapped up in a cocoon. The cocoon that surrounds me is there to protect me, to protect me from any more pain, any more shame. I realize now that the cocoon is God's grace, that wonderful grace that holds me near, that wonderful grace that makes God's love so dear. God has come and wrapped around me things I need to help me grow. His love, his peace, his joy, his mercy, long suffering, I feel him all around me. Yet in this place I cannot stay. God has more for me than this peaceful, obscure place. After this time of healing inside, I feel a moving, a stirring. I have a desire to fly. I feel a change. It's amazing to me. I struggle, I wiggle, I push side to side. In my cocoon, a miracle came. I went in not much more than a worm. But God Almighty took the elements that hurt. Tears, pain, sorrow, rejection, and fears. My Savior took all these things, and my Creator made wings. I must get out. I must be free. God and His kingdom are waiting on me. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We have a tendency to allow the things of life, amen, to do us great damage. If we do not get over them, if we do not overcome them, if we do not let God help us, praise God. The love of God right now, amen, is, is in this house. Amen. And all of us have stories we could tell. All of us could, amen, talk of different situations through life that have hurt us, harmed us, caused us emotional or mental anguish, even physical anguish and abuse. Amen. But God, calm. Wraps us, puts his arms as it were around us. Amen. We feel the blanket of his embrace as he wraps his love and care and concern. You know, there's a time to stand still, there's a time to wait, there's a time to allow God to do what God does best, and that is healing. Heal us from all the things that the life brings our direction. Amen. If I, you would allow me to read another poem. And uh, it's called Time for Me to Gain Some Ground. Amen. And this is a little more pointed, if you believe. It goes like this. I'm not going to gain a thing if I just sit around and complain. Things are not going to change. If I'm content just to maintain, it's time for me to gain some ground. It's time for me to get up, stand up, toughen up, get break up. It's time for me to gain some ground. It's time for me to overcome my number one enemy that would be me. Time for me to gain some ground. There's no one else to blame. If it's going to be, it's up to me. It's time for me to gain some ground. God is for me. Who can be against me? It's time for me to get the victory. It's time for me to gain some ground. 
By God's grace, I'm going to run my race. I'm going to cross that finish line. It's time for me to paint some rock. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We have a tendency amen, to look back at our yesterdays. Amen. And, and remember. Amen. Pain and remember suffering and remember rejection. Amen. Remember all the things that hurt us. We have a tendency to allow the things that try to do the most damage to us, amen, to rule our future. You bear with me? Yeah. Amen. And we keep looking backwards and we cannot see what's in front of us. So we keep looking in the rearview mirror. Amen. We keep looking back and we have no hope for tomorrow because of our past. Can I, can I preach to us that God wants to change that in your life this morning? Amen. Praise God that God wants to change all of that. Bury it. Somebody say bury it. Get it under the ground. Cover it up. Amen. Don't even put a memorial there. Don't even stick flowers on the grave. Just walk away from it. Amen. Because you don't live in the past. You live in the future. Amen. God has a plan for your life. God has a future. Amen. For us and for this church. Praise God. Can you say amen? amen? Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want to read from Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse 9. I want to read verse 9 and 10. Amen. And we'll stay in this chapter. This will be my outline as I preach. Amen. I think the, the proper terminology for this type of preaching, I, I believe it's called expository. If you want to get technical. Amen. It's called expository preaching. So we're going to expose it. Talk, but we're going to expose it. Talk. Can't even say it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I'm preaching we're going to yeah. It's good to see everybody. Good to meet some folks that I have not met yet. God bless you. So good. good to see you. Amen. I can preach your quite often. Amen. Praise God. This is like my second church, I believe. A moment the Bible says, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. Somebody say vision. vision. Amen. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Amen. Come to Macedonia and help us. Praise God. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the word of the Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, that you have opened our hearts. Let us hear your voice of God. Let us be sensitive, Lord, that you would speak to us in the name of Jesus, that we would be changed and challenged with a good understanding of what the will of God is for our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. If I say in Jesus' name. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. The, the, the scripture said, and I, amen, repeat, in a vision, the scripture called in the night. Amen. I want to minister to us about visions and callings. Amen. Vision and callings. Amen. And in this vision that Paul had of this man that came over that pleaded, prayed him, pleaded with him, saying, come over to the Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision immediately, key word there is immediately, Amen. Not hesitating, not putting it off, not wrestling around with it. Amen. But, but immediately we endeavor to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. I believe with all of my heart that there is a tremendous 
reliable Gnabaline Texas for this church. Amen. I believe, amen, that your pastor, Pastor and Sister Driscoll, amen, are here, amen, but by divine appointment. Yes, sir. It is amazing, and, and you know, right now as an evangelist, amen, yeah. I have the, the blessing of, of preaching in different churches at times, and, and, and I get to hear, and I get to witness, amen, how the God moved and how did God call certain people to certain places. Amen. And, and I, amen, thank you for what it's worth. I don't I don't put my name in the hat. If I want to go someplace to pastor church, I'm not going to put my name in the hat and draw the lucky straw. And I'm not going to do it. Amen. If God calls me to a place, he's going to open the door for me to go to that place. Amen. To be the pastor. Until that time happens, I'll do what I'm doing right now. Amen. And so, you know, the calling of God, God would call somebody to a certain city and God to answer, for that man to answer that call. Are you with me? Uh -huh. Amen. For a man to say, Suddenly, I got a burden for this city. And, uh, you know, God has laid this place on my heart, and, and it is the will of God. I feel it's the will of God for me to go there, for that man to, to pack his belongings, and pack his family's belongings, and what a burden that is. Amen. And pack, amen, and move, and transfer the family from one place to another place. Amen. Not not because he just wants to carry the title of pastor, but because he wants to fulfill the will of God. Because he wants to do what he feels the Lord, amen, has dealt with him to do. Amen. And so when Paul seen this vision, amen, immediately, amen, they, they make arrangements, amen, to go, amen, into that place. And the, the Bible said, Amen, that they came to, amen, Philippi, which is the chief city of the part of Macedonia and a colony, and were in that city abiding certain days. Verse 13, and on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which, were, which resorted thither. Amen. And a certain, verse 14, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, amen, which worshiped God, which worshiped God. Amen, I'm going to try to preach to, amen, this church, amen, that there are literally thousands of people in Abilene, Texas, that worship God. Amen. They don't worship Baal. They don't worship Allah. Amen. They don't worship anybody or any other God. Amen. But Jehovah. They worship him and to, to the best of their ability and to the best of their understanding. But they worship. Amen. They got up this morning. Amen. They, they combed their hair. They brushed their teeth. Amen. They put their dresses on. They put their suit on. Amen. Their ties. Amen. They, they got everything all ready. Amen. Got the children ready. And they went to a church somewhere. Amen. And they did their best to worship God with the knowledge that they have. Yes, sir. Praise Amen. God. And the Bible said that Lydia worshiped God. Amen. Heard us. She heard us, the Bible said. Amen. There are people all around us. Amen. That if they had the opportunity, amen, to hear, amen, the word of God. Amen. And they hear us, praise God, whose heart the Lord opened. Amen. That she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Praise God. Amen. That there are some people out there 
Right now. Everybody say right now. Right now. <clears throat> given, given the opportunity. Amen. That the Lord would open their heart and they would hear, amen, the truth of God's word. Yes, sir. And when she was baptized, praise God, she worshiped before she was baptized. Yes, sir. She was sincere in her worship before she got the revelation of truth. Amen. amen. What I want to impress upon us is that when God filled us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Amen. He filled us with the spirit of truth. Amen. He filled us with the knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And everywhere we go, amen, we take with us the spirit of truth. Somebody said amen. amen. Praise God. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house. Amen. If you want to know when somebody is feeling comfortable with you, when somebody is letting their guard down and they're trusting you, they'll say, come into my house. Amen. Let's have supper. Praise God. That's always a good thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come to my house. Hallelujah. Now, if you knock on their door and they just stand at the door like, you ain't getting in. I don't want to know nothing about it. You look like an encyclopedia salesman. You sell a curvy back. Hallelujah. And they ain't letting you in. Amen. You got a problem. But when you ring the doorbell, they say, won't you come on in? Make sure you have a home. Praise God. Won't you join us for supper? You got your foot in the door. You go. God opened the door. Don't ruin the opportunity, right. amen, to be a witness to that house. Amen. God opened the door. Praise God. And if, if somebody opens the door to me and say, well, come on in, let's have supper. You can stay for supper. Man, I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm eating. And one of the things I don't like for my Hispanic friends, menudo. <laughs> Ain't no place in this white boy's life for menudo. No. Not the will of God. Christmas. We sit down at the table with a big old pot of manudo. They're talking about peach tea. I'm too white. I mean, y'all better give me some mashed potatoes and gravy or something. But if I was trying to win somebody to God and they invited me over for supper, and I get in that house, and they say, we're having a menudo. I'll be like, oh, glory. <laughs> I'll be asking the Lord to bless that menudo. Amen. Because I'm not to eat it. And I ain't going to offend nobody. I ain't going to say, oh, I don't need that. No, I'm going to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, help me. Help me. As I say grace three times, help me. To eat this menudo with a smile on my face. Amen. Sanctify it, Lord. There you go. Amen. Change those feet into beasts. Amen. I ain't going to offend nobody. I'm going to eat it because the ultimate goal. It's for me to develop a friendship with these people that open their home to me and let me walk through that door. That's it. Amen. A sure sign that somebody, amen, is trusting you and somebody's <laughs> trying to develop a friendship with you is that they'll open their house. Uh -huh. right. Praise God. And invite you, amen, to come in, amen, and sup with them. Hallelujah.
Praise God. And so they did. Praise God. The Bible said, and she constrained us. Verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination, amen, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And, th and this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Amen. You, you've got to understand, and, and I mentioned this, amen, the last time I preached here, amen, that what she was saying was true. The spirit she was saying it in was mockery. Uh -huh. Amen. And this mockery, after, amen, a certain amount of days, got on the apostles' nerves. There you go. Amen. We, we need to understand that the enemy, any time you or I or we are going to have a move of God in our life, there is always going to be opposition. Yes, there is always going to be something come against us. Yes, amen. And a lot of folks, amen, when that opposition comes, they go, oh, this can't be the will of God. No, it probably is the will of God. Amen. Because you've got to press your way through it. Amen. You got it. Did I hear from God or did I not hear from God? Did God call me to do this or did God not call me to do this? Amen. Is this the will of God or is it not the will of God? And if you're convinced it's the will of God, amen, nothing's going to stop you from fulfilling the plan and the purpose of God. Can you say amen? If God challenges you, amen, to go pray for somebody, don't let nothing stop you. Amen, if God's calling you to go to the jail ministry, don't let nothing stop you. If God tells you to go to the hospital and pray for somebody, don't let nothing stop you. Amen, whatever God is calling you to do, amen, you got a burden, I want to go preach at the nursing home. Amen, don't let nothing stop you. Amen. Amen. I want to send kids in Sunday school. Don't let nothing stop you. Praise God. Amen. But there you can count on. There's always going to be opposition. Amen. Come against you. Amen. And when the Apostle Paul, amen, cast out this spirit. Now notice this. And again, I alluded to this the other, the other night. Amen. Is that Paul did not rebuke her. Huh? A lot of times, amen, we want flesh to flesh. Amen. And not understanding that it's not the person themselves, it's the spirit motivating the person. Amen. It is the evil spirit. It's a demonic spirit. Amen. That spirit of divination that this woman had. Amen. It's, it's that spirit that's coming against them. Amen. So don't take it out on the person. The person is bound and controlled, amen, by an evil spirit. You got somebody coming against you on the job, amen. Don't rebuke the person. Don't get in a confrontation with the person. Don't get in a fight with the person. Amen. Rebuke the devil that's in the person. Help that person, amen, be delivered. There you go. Now, praise God. But there's a problem here. Verse 19. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. I wish to God they can say that about us. Amen. Amen. I want to God, amen, that we would have so much strife built up because of the truth. And that souls were being delivered from false doctrine because of truth. 
Amen. Amen. And the people who've been delivered from drugs because of truth. Amen. Amen. The souls will be delivered from prostitution because of truth. Amen. 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 And the people would understand there's something about this church. There's something about these people. There's something about this doctrine. There's something about this gospel. Amen. Amen. That they don't keep you in the trash. They don't leave you where you are. Amen. That you're delivered. You're set free. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Verse 21 said, And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they say many stripes, many. charging the jailer to keep them safely, and having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Many stripes. Opposition. Pain. Suffering. Amen. What are you going to do? It is those times, listen to me, church. It is in the times of your greatest opposition. It is in the times of your moments of pain that God can use you most. Where your witness stands out the greatest when you are in opposition and adversity. Amen. It's not time to throw in the towel and say, what in the world are we doing in here? And get a get a very fleshly and a very carnal attitude about things. You with me? All things work together for good. All things work together for good. Not some things, all things. Amen. And sometimes in our carnality, our fleshly ways of life, amen, we, we get this poor me syndrome and why is this happening to me and why do I got to go through this and, and how come this and how come that and why, 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 amen. And, and you want a little cheese with that one? Amen. And we wonder why, why, why? Friend of mine, be faithful. Remain faithful to the call. Remain faithful, amen, to what God has placed you in. Yes, sir. Amen. Because people are watching you. People are observing you. Now I preach this 10,000 times. If I preached it once, amen, it's when you're in your greatest opposition, amen, that your light shines the greatest. Amen. amen, because it's easy to shout about the goodness of God, amen, when everything's going well. It's easy to brag about Jesus, amen, when everything is wonderful and you've got a good Christmas bonus. Hallelujah. Amen. And next year, amen, you're getting a job promotion and praise God. Amen, but friend of mine, it's when you're wrapped in pain. Oh. Amen, and disappointment. Amen, and you've been stripped away. Amen, and you're suffering. Amen, and now, amen, people want to know, is your God still good? One scripture, amen, that you and I are to rejoice in and what we are to dance over and run the aisles for is that all things work together for good. Uh, amen. To them that love God, everything, everything, everything. Uh, amen. amen. They didn't get a casual little whooping. They got a beat. 
defeated. Many stripes. You do a historical search on that and you'll discover, amen, that their ripped were ripped in ribbons. Down from the, the lower back, amen, down past their buttocks, amen, to their thighs, amen, they are ripped to shreds. Deep lashes. And they find themselves suffering, Lord, bleeding. Amen. The blood pressure, no doubt, is up. Amen. Every nerve in their back and their, their thighs, amen, are just pulsating. Amen. With pain. And every move they make, amen, is intensified with the sharpness of pain. Oh, Lord, this is going to hurt. Amen. But sometimes we can't come to church because we've got an ingrown toenail. You got a little bit of, you think I'm coming down with something. You better stay home. Don't be. A, uh, little friend of mine, you got to push your way. You got to say, Did God call me to this? Did God call me to this? Did God call me to this? I've got family watching me. Amen. I've got children watching me. Amen. I got loved ones watching me. I got co workers watching me. Amen. I'm not going to throw in the towel at the, my most adverse moment. Amen. I'm going to love God. I'm going to be faithful to worship. Amen. I'm going to be faithful to praise God. I'm going to be faithful to sing. I'm going to be faithful to glorify God. Amen. Through my tears, through my pain, through my disappointment. Man, we've heard it preached so many times. Verse 25, in that midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Amen. Not making accusation against God. Amen. Not declaring this can't be the will of God. We've often wondered how could this be God's will? How could it be God's will for me to lose things that were so precious to me? You with me? You know, if you'll take the time to pray at the midnight hour. If you'll take the time to raise your hands at the midnight hour. If you'll take the time to sing at the midnight hour. Yes, sir. And the prisoners heard the hour. Oh, come on, somebody. I just got a revelation. You know why? When the earthquake came, amen, and the doors, all the doors were open, and every one of them was set free, you know why they didn't run? Because Paul. Silas had the most undivided attention. Right. How can you worship a God that allows you to suffer so much? How can you praise a God that allows you to go through such torment? You know how? Because God has a better plan. God has a bigger plan. God's ways are above our ways. Oh, yeah. Amen. There's no searching his understanding. I am here by the will of God. And I, come on, I'm preaching to somebody. And if I got to go through this to get to that, I'm willing to go through whatever it takes. Amen. I will love God in the storm. I will love God through the storm. I will love God through the storm. I will love God through all the loss. Amen. I will love God through the rejection. I will love God through all the, the mockeries. Amen. I will love God. I will be faithful to God. I will worship God.
You got to see it, folks. You got to see it. Amen. The singing, the praying, the saying, the praises to God. The prisoners heard them. And amen. As, I believe as they were singing, amen, perhaps as their hands were raised, the tears streaming down their face, amen, and those are back, say that, uh, pulsating in tremendous amount of pain. They're faithful. Hey, Amen. And I don't know how it started, but all of a sudden, things begin to shake. All right. Yeah, come on. Hey, Amen. The very foundation of the prison shake. Praise God. Suddenly, suddenly. Everybody say suddenly. Say everybody, come on, somebody say suddenly. You need to shout suddenly. Amen. Because that's the ways of God. Suddenly. Amen. Suddenly. Hallelujah. Amen. One minute. Amen. Amen. You're just racked in pain. Amen. One minute you're just going through hell on earth. Amen. But all of a sudden God changes things. All of a sudden God begins to move in the midst of your prayer. God begins to move in the midst. Let's pray. Of this earth. And take it for your breath. 
And she took this little verse by the hand and began to pray. For God to give her understanding as to the faith that we have in Him. Praise God. Praise God. The most adverse time, God, you will be there with us. Somebody say amen. What must I do to be saved? Verse 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy heart. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And to all that were in his house. And it took them the same hour of the night. Somebody say the same hour. The same hour of the night to wash their stripes. Amen. But no doubt, they part in their suffering. Are now in our suffering. Praise God. It could be those, amen, that have mocked you. Rejected you, so on and so forth. Those could be the very ones that wash your stripes and look back to you. Praise God. And look back to you. He in all his straight way. And notice this, verse 34. And when he, he, and when he had brought them into his house, And when he had brought them into his house, he set me before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his heart. When they bring you again and invite you. Because if I can get inside of their home, there is hope that I can build them to God. And that's my absolute objective. That's my only objective. The Bible says, and let me conclude with this, the Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. But how many of you chefs here know that too much salt can ruin anything? Why did the sister question? Must be a story behind that. Too much salt, sister Elizabeth, can ruin anything. Just need a little bit of this salt. Why is popcorn so good? Why is bread so sweet? So, praise God. You don't need a whole lot when you're trying to bring people to God. And then you get a Praise God. And let me use this illustration as I conclude. If I came up to a thirsty individual, a thirsty man, a thirsty woman, and I knew that they were dying of thirst, they were dehydrated, and they needed water to survive. I went and unscrewed this cap, opened their mouth, and doused them. Would do. Give them 
much as I can eat. I like steak. Medium rare. Don't have to put much seasoning. I don't need A1. I don't need Heinz 57. I don't need none of it. Just give me the beef. There you go. Medium rare. Little salt, little pepper. I'm good. As much as I like steak. I don't want nobody shoving it down my throat. Amen. You don't need to shove this down people's throats. You don't need to take the approach that I'm better than you are or who long you are. Come on. Agree with me or disagree with me? That's your business. You have the right to be wrong. <laughs> but understand this. There's people out there that like God just as much as you do. That God is true. They worship God the best they know how with the knowledge that they know. It's our responsibility to expound it to them the word of God with what they do. There you go. I was talking to a pastor again one day, years and years ago. He said, I saw Jesus, or I saw Mary, and the Dr. Pepper bottle. He didn't see Mary at all. I'm not going to offend that man by saying that. Who am I to argue? The man saw Jesus on the Dr. Pepper bottle. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there. I was going to argue. Our business, folks, is not to argue people into the church. Yes. They're never going to do it. Never going to do it. But we're right there now. Your spirit may be just as wrong about that as you think. We don't take the approach of criticizing downgrading, humiliating, arguing, we win in. He that wins in the soul is So, you go to win somebody, sometimes you've got to eat and move it. See that grease floating on top right now? I can see that harmony. I see all that fat. The pig's feet. Somebody said, Oh, that sounded good. God bless you, honey. Which you said, Which you said, they went to lime in it. Now I know why they split a bunch of lime in it, don't you? Bowl of lime. Can I have some extra lime, please? I don't know why you put it in there. I gotta change the taste of it somehow. <laughs> now, let's all stand in there. Praise the Lord. Call it God. The purpose of God. The will of God. Sometimes through life we go through some things that we don't have a clue. We have no understanding. And then we trust. We hold to God through it all. Praise God. If you love the Lord, you will live for Him. If you love Him, you'll live for Him. Beyond the stakes that Amen. Do yourself a favor and continue reading. Amen. About the church of Macedonia. The 
they were the ones that became the tremendous blessing to the poor saints. They were the ones, amen, that were very gracious. Come on, the boss came out throughout the years. to give you an opportunity and then to calm down. This is not just for the leadership of the ministry of the church. This is for the men. I put it on the ladies' side. Amen. Because I want the ladies to gather together and I want the ladies first to come in the altar service. Your sister Linda has been revealed. Amen. And all the ladies come at will. Amen. Let's pray over this handkerchief and pray with me. Amen. I believe in these things, do we not? Yes. Absolutely. We believe God is going to heal. Amen. My wife of asthma. I believe God is going to bless. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody that will, that wants to, but does too. Amen. Put your faith in this. Hallelujah. Pray the prayer of faith. Amen. After the ladies get done, the men are going to jump in and we're going to pray. Amen. And we're going to believe God in Jesus' name that my wife will not have to use the, amen, the, the machine tonight. Praise God. After you pray over the handkerchief, pray for my wife. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's make some noise up in the house. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you're the Almighty, omnipotent Lord of the land. God, there's not a sickness, there's not a disease, there's not a diagnosis. God, there's not a problem, Lord, that you cannot overcome. We trust you, Lord, in Jesus' name to heal right now. Let the prayer of faith, Lord, move right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you for healing my wife. Amen. Amen. That's right. Would you pray for my wife? Amen. Ladies, would you just gather around Sister Music? Amen. And pray for her to rebuke as my God. Give her brand new lungs, Lord. Give her brand new lungs in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord. If the men will gather around, amen, we're going to pray over this handkerchief, men. Amen. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, your healing virtue, Lord, to flow, Lord, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord.